You're listening to Shoe In, covering the ins and outs of all things footwear, from sneakers to heels, loafers to slippers, and every type of shoe in between. Brought to you by the FDRA, the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion. Helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. And now your footwear insiders, Matt Priest and Andy Polk. As the wise person once said, the only thing constant is change. That was not me, Matt. That's, that's not my quote. Someone I thought that was your I. quote, man. I many thought that people, was you. Many people attribute it to me on the internet. but They do. If they you do. scoop it or you fact check it, it's, it's not true. I have many other quotes that are very wise. Uh, but that Maybe it was James K. Polk who said it, not Ann, Charles Andrew Polk. Well, that's maybe that's true, but I mean the one the one constant of Polk's is anti tariff. So I'll just remind everyone out there who's already forgotten or may not have known. More likely, James K. Polk was a tariff fighter and lowered the tariffs for the U.S. at the time. So there we go. Him. The Good Polk's continue the battles um, as we go forward. But in speaking of tariffs, I guess, and and one of our core competencies. At FDRA is, is both on the government relations side here in D.C. fighting tariffs and regulations. It also increasingly is about helping strengthen the footwear industry on the business side and relationships and providing services. Because I think, as we said at the beginning, the changes that are happening, it's happening inside FDRA, it's happening in the footwear industry. As consumers, we're all changing and morphing and, and operations are shifting a lot. And as an association, it we have to keep changing and keep adding new resources and new personnel to help us make sure that we're connecting the industry in the right way, empowering it, advocating on its behalf. Um, but really, you know, what's great about this industry is it's, it's all relational. Um, and so I think we're really excited, Matt, you can, you can introduce the de- the guests today, but we're really excited to have a new member of the team join to help enhance what we've been doing, grow what we've been doing and in hope, hopefully, serve the footwear industry much more effectively and better than we've done in the past. Yeah. So many people know that we have a a small but mighty team, Andy. Uh, And so to have the opportunity to bring in someone of of Sandy Mines' stature within our industry into the FDRA family is super exciting. So Sandy, welcome to Shoe and Show. You're our new vice president of corporate engagement. You've been at it for about a month at this point. Thank you, one, for joining FDRA. Thank you for joining Shoe and Show. Uh, we're super excited that you're here. But bef- as before we kind of go down the road of what we expect all of us to accomplish together with your arrival, we ask this of our guests who, uh, who've who never been on the show before to kind of tell us their shoe story. And sometimes it's folks started a factory in England and other times people just walked in the shoe industry door uh, five minutes ago. But that is not your story because I know it uh, intimately, but I don't think our listeners do. So, Sandy, welcome to the program and lay it on us. What is your shoe story? Awesome. Well, thank you for having me today. And um, I'm super excited about joining the FDRA team and working alongside you, Matt, and you, Andy. Um, I could not be um, more excited and privileged to join this small team and Hope, um, I hope to maximize and engage more people in the industry. But um, to share a little bit about my background, a lot of people know this, some people don't. Um, I grew up um, um, in the industry with my father, Bernie Leifer, being um, the president of SG um, Goldberg at the time. Now it's called SG Imports. Um, they had a factory in Hackensack, New Jersey, when I was growing up um, and I grew up going to the factory and watching three generations of people um, in families making, creating slippers. It was a slipper manufacturing company at the time. And they, they got into licensing and they brought um, their manufacturing services overseas to China um, 10 or 20 years later. But I grew up going to factories and, and being part of that, you know, that, moment at that time. And then when things changed, I ended up watching how SG brought on different licenses and kids, kids footwear and rain boots. And, and then eventually they, they opened up um, into apparel and, and sleepwear and things like that. But 
I grew up in this industry, you know, when I was 10 years old, I grew up at, when I was 15 years old, I was going to shoe shows and WSA and, and so on. So um, I come by, honestly, I have a lot of great relationships in the industry um, from when I was young and I've developed a lot of new ones along the way and I'm still, you know, learning and meeting new people and I'm really excited about being part of the next next few years at FDRA. Well, that's awesome because you come from not only a, a family background of footwear, your professional background is Uber footwear as well, right? So you're a publisher of Footwear News uh, most recently and you served yeah. for 19 years at the publication. Uh, so much has changed within our industry, but you've had you've been you've had a front row seat to those changes at Footwear News and now at FDRA. So kind of as you think about what is uh, our biggest challenges and or opportunities in the new year um, from your perch at FDRA now and prior from Fort Worth News, what do you think those are, right? What do you think is the, the biggest challenges that we face as an industry? And, and how do you think that FDRA can help kind of solve those issues? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Um, and I think that the challenges right now, obviously, on supply chain and inventory and all of those kinds of things are really kind of front facing. And I think they're um, both short term and long term challenges. Um, but the opportunity to to work together and to engage with um, different, you know, different solutions and using different technologies and and using some of the FDRA um, members and services, I think that's going to provide a lot of great solutions for the future. Um, I definitely think that um, the trade show business and the advertising and the programs and the networking um, opportunities have changed as well. I mean, we used to go to trade shows many times a year and that's how we would network and we would go to charity events and networking events and um, the last couple of years we didn't have the opportunity to do that so we had to shift and use some new technology to, to network and to work together and i think fdra um, has those great workshops every week um, those working groups on tuesdays that are phenomenal and and there's so much engagement and and so many amazing people that come forward to talk about what the challenges are but what the opportunities are in the future. Um, I did spend 18, 19 years at Footwear News um, talking to a lot of brands and retailers um, over the years about how to become more relevant, how to become more um, engaging, how to focus on product, and then also tell a story about their back-end sustainability missions and talk about their diversity, equity, and inclusion missions and things like that. And I think that FDRA has really leaned in there as well. And I'm excited to be working alongside some of the people at FDRA to, to engage with some of those groups that, that are really going to help network and maximize, you know, everyone's potential to their fullest. And I think that's what's great about our team now is that we all – have different roles to play, but we're all relational, right? We all have these relationships. We keep building for the industry. We find where challenges are and try to find that value. And I think Sandy is going to be a great addition in terms of going out and making sure that we're listening uh, intently to what, especially companies are having issues with where we can build those solutions and pull people together and tie things together in ways that we haven't been able to do previously. And, and hopefully as an association, we'll continue to grow, not just the membership, but the value that we give to the industry and bring people together. Cause I think you're right, Sandy, it's the, obviously the world's changed cause of COVID, but we've really tried to adapt to that world and find ways to continue to have those engagements. And I think, you know, obviously, and I do want to ask you about Fanny and what we're, you know, thinking about as we continue to, you know, we, FDRA took over Fanny in this last year and we're trying to reimagine market week as best we can to make sure that the the business side is really you know robust in terms of bringing in the buyers and the sellers and all that stuff but as you look forward and around fanny in particular what are you thinking around market weeks going forward like how do we how do we consider that or think about that creatively and and make sure that we're we're providing the values that we need to the industry yeah i mean i think that that's an interesting um, place for us to, to think about what we want to do with Fanny, especially in the in the time today where things are changing every single day with relation to COVID and the rules and the restrictions and people traveling. Um, 
I think that for February, um, it sounds like the select showrooms are going to be open and seeing buyers and there will be some brands that will be showing if their retailers and their customers and their their you know key buyers are going to be coming to town so um we did do a survey of a few people and asked you know who's going to be in town what it will look like you know how can we make it seamless and efficient and really a working show for them and i think that Um, The feedback that we got was that, you know, it won't be as robust maybe as June and December in New York, but there will be two or three days of appointments. And as it gets closer, they will see which buyers will be wanting to come to town. So um, obviously things have shifted in terms of the the ordering dates and all of the the deadlines. And obviously it's going to be moved um, a little bit more towards the January timeframe. So some people felt like February would be a little bit late, but many others felt like it, it was important to be there. So we want to make sure that we're supporting the brands that want to be there and we'll do whatever it takes to make sure that it's, um, it's a great show for them. I think there's a lot of other amazing regional shows out there that brands are going to be able to utilize, you know, in their backyard or they'll be able to drive to or, or, just make it a more efficient show for them. And that's, that's awesome too. So um, we're there to serve the industry and the brands and the retailers all alike. So um, I think that's, what's going to happen for February and June, I think is going to be tremendous. I think it's going to be a, a really, really strong show. Everyone's really excited about talking about June already. So we're looking at some options for some of the brands that won't, that don't have their own showroom. So um, that's where we're going to dig in right now. And we'll try to do some, you know, networking or programming around that June show, and and then we'll take it from there. But that's that's kind of our our first two shows out. So when you think about how the lines have blurred ar- around what trade associations historically do, what media companies do, um, what uh, law firms do, if you think about how you know uh, media companies now host events and educational opportunities and. Trade associations now do uh, media and content generation and newsletters. And it seems like all the lines are are blurred amongst these different types of organizations that serve the industry. What does, from your perspective, only again, having been here a month, but having served on the other side of the ledger, if you will, with forward news, what do you think is kind of the core competency or the, the angle that a trade association would have that's different than the, the for-profit uh, media company or the law firm or the fact now factories come to New York and do innovation summits. Right. So what's kind of the different, what's the, the value proposition for the trade association that's different than all these other companies that are in within our landscape? I think the compilation of data and services and using the best practices from all of these different organizations is the difference, right? Everyone's joining forces to provide the best practices and the best services. And we are pulling all of that together into the Intel Center. And so when someone um, in the industry is asking a question about logistics or patents or trade shows or tariffs or anything, we, we kind of take a look at all of the different services and all the different products and all of the different data and then hand it back to them um, and share it to them. And I think that's that's very different than any other company or organization provides. So we pull all that together and then offer the best um, information that we possibly can um, and, and individualize and customize reports for companies. I think that is, is so crucial. Um, so many people have very specific questions um, that they need answers to, and they're not really sure where to go. And I, I love learning about the back end logistics and um, the business solutions for these companies. And I think that that's invaluable information for them. Sandy, you talk to a number of footwear executives, just like Matt does almost on a daily basis. As we look forward to 2022 and beyond, what are, the, what are executives talking about more now than they used to? Is it, you know, concerns around supply chain? Is it consumer shifts? Like what are around these conversations as we look forward and as an industry that we're trying to build solutions for, 
what are you hearing about lately that are, are positives too? Like what op- yeah. optimism around sales and, and, and what kind of seasons that might be coming up? What do you hear in general, just to give a kind of a tidbit? Yeah, I mean, outside of the supply chain and the inventory, that that obviously is the most crucial right now. But I mean, overall, I think that companies are trying to figure out how they can tell a better story, how they can become more sustainable. What does that really mean? What are those products really look like? And and does it make a difference to consumers? And I think consumers have really shown that it does make a difference and they want to know the back end story of those products that they're buying. So Um, obviously sustainability, um, definitely up there in in the top three things. I think that um, a lot of companies are talking about how to um, develop culture in a community, in their, in this weird moment of hybrid and not in person. And how do you create like a great company where people feel valued and appreciated Mm -hmm. and connected in, in a virtual world? So I think that is, that's important. And I have to say um, the most exciting thing for me has also been around the inclusion conversations and the diversity inclusion conversations about how to make sure that your company is listening to the employees and understanding what their needs are and understanding the opportunity levels for every single person and how to connect more. So Um, those are a few topics that I've really found exciting and that have been bubbling up for, for a long period of time, but even more so in the last year, I would say. Mm. Yeah, no, for sure. I think the whole ESG kind of, what are your values and how are you publicly perceived? And do you have, particularly if you're publicly traded, how, how are you going to go and accomplish these, these really specific, but relatively new, um, metrics that the companies are being measured by investors and consumers. And it used to just be, do you have a great product and you're profitable? And it's much more than that these days. And so it's just a, it's just a totally unique environment. Um, Sandy, last question from my side, any, and we're, we've been asking this over the last few episodes, any kind of new year's resolution resolutions for you at the end of 22, what do you want to look back behind you and, and have accomplished uh, from an from an FDRA perspective, uh, as it relates to kind of what the year ahead of us and what we hope to drive to our members in terms of value, um, I would say for 2022, I'm really excited for um, making a mark um, at FDRA and really maximizing the content and the information and the programming that FDRA has already in its wheelhouse. There are so many things that people don't know about. So just to make sure that that's um, displayed and shown and distributed even bigger and and better, I think I'm really excited about that piece of it. Um, I'm excited about learning um, about the back end, about the business and logistics and and the sourcing side. Um, So pushing myself to learn learn about that piece a little bit more, um, I'm really excited about. And um, is that, that, that's more on a professional side, right? You're asking me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can share whatever you want. <laughs> doing shows. So that's Sandy, up to you. Sandy, Sandy said she's going to bring on a thousand new members. So we're right. Saying. Right. That's my, that's my short term goal, um, <laughs> is to bring on a thousand new members. But I mean, just you, you, you started the conversation off this way and you said, you know, getting outside of your comfort zone, right. Um, and change, um, is, is every day. Right. So I'm looking to push myself a little bit. I mean, moving outside of my comfort zone, jumping from footwear news after 18 years was a big change. And, um, that took, you know, that that's a risky move and I'm excited about it, but I think that was, um, that was part of my resolution, um, for last year. So I have a lot, a lot to live up to now. Well, the water's warm on this side. It's, it, it, it'll be fun. <laughs> Did you uh, share your resolutions, Andy and Matt? Andy? I resolve not to resolve. How about that? Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I think um, part of, at least professionally, what we want to do this year is really expand the services. There's a lot of companies out there that are struggling um, who don't know what they don't know, who 
I guess is FOMO still. It's like fear of missing out. Um, who aren't connected and getting the services they need to, to, to be more robust and increase their business. I mean, ultimately our job is to serve and it's to create more jobs and open more markets and help, help products innovate. And we do that in many ways, non-sexy ways, but it's, it's part of our contribution. And it's the great thing about working at a nonprofit is, you know, um, is figuring out how to make that happen um, and serve the industry and, and continue to build relationships. So for me, it's, my hope is in 2022, we keep expanding and adding in those companies that really need the help. Um, we're going to continue to provide the great services and and benefits to all the companies that have been members and know the value. Um, but I'm excited to have you on Sandy to help find those companies that don't know about us, but really need us and really need the support and need the community too. Because I think there's a lot of disjoint, as, as good as the community is in footwear, there's still many people out there that are disjointed and don't know how to plug in how to get mentorship, how to get help where they need it in a variety of ways. And and I think having you come on and also having market week where we can facilitate that over a period of time, not just on a, a one hour call here and there, but over a period of several days to build, to build the community is really what it's after. Cause I think after COVID we have, we have to rebuild the community in many ways. Um, it's there, but we just, we need to figure out, you know, we're talking about values corporately. We need to figure out our values as a footwear industry about how we reshape what we're doing. We've seen that happen, but I think 2022 is going to be an acceleration because those conversations now are going to be face to face. And I'm excited about that. And I'm excited to have those conversations with, with our team and with our industry about what it looks like going forward. Yeah, I agree, Andy. I totally agree. And just market week in December was just a sampling of what we knew, right? Uh, very familial, very social industry. Uh, and it's also a foretaste of what's hopefully to come as we continue to emerge from, from this pandemic environment. My New Year's resolution will always be uh, relevancy, right? Are we relevant? Uh, and that speaks a lot to what Andy was just talking about, Sandy. But but if we're irrelevant and people don't see the value, they're not going to invest in the trade association of the industry, which is us. So for me, it's like, how do we stay relevant? How do we stay hungry? How do we stay entrepreneurial? Uh, how do we try things and throw things against the wall and scrap them if they suck um, and then build upon our strengths? So you coming on, one, you're super relevant within the industry as a person because of relationships and your history within the industry. But So how do we connect, like plug into the Sandy Mind stream, right? And, and ensure that we're driving more relevancy to the industry in a broader sense. And I think each of you, both of you have said that in different ways. Uh, and I think that would be my kind of my summation of what I hope to accomplish in 22. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you for your support. It's been fun to be on here with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I You're think, welcome anytime. You can I kick us this off. Be, you can well, there, on your own too. This is going to be the first of many. And honestly, we started the podcast based on the trade show experience. And we were like, gosh, it, and this goes back to what I was saying we're having such good conversations with executives and it's insulated, right? You can only have one or two people around a, a table or a con what if we took those same conversations and broadcasted them like no trade secrets or anything like that. People are always concerned, but broadcast it and create content that helps other people think about their own business and the way they're doing things so that they can improve and increase and grow and, and deliver dynamic product uh, in the marketplace. And that's really what the podcast. Is. So this is the first of many, I think, um, Sandy, really quickly, personal question. What shoe size are you? Nine, nine. And over the last two years, how has your shoe collection changed because of COVID? Okay. I have a lot. I have a lot of cool slippers. All right. I have more sneakers if that's even possible. <laughs> and I have a lot of boots. Like I have a lot of black boots, but with like a lug sole, I, I you know, like a flat comfort, yep. yummy black leather. <laughs> <laughs> like so everything, you know, I mean, obviously I'm not, we're not getting um, dressed up as much anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. But I had a great time at the footwear news achievement awards. Um, mm -hmm a few weeks ago and I was able to, to dress up and not wear, um, you know, my, my slippers. And I was excited to have, you know, my feet 
um, ache a little bit. That was totally fine with me and comfortable. And I will say that um, Fanny in, in New York um, this past December was phenomenal. It was great to be back in action. It was great to see everybody um, in person. I, I've never seen so many smiles and so many people, you know, hugging and excited to be, you know, in person, face to face and doing business and networking as I as I had this past December. So that was pretty phenomenal. It was yeah, fun. That's awesome. Fun. And I, I'm also excited because, you know, the leaves are all off the trees and you don't hear the leaf blowers, but I found a new way to use my leaf blower and that's going up to all my dress shoes and blowing off all the cobwebs for 2022. So, <laughs> here we go. It did scare my children, but I'm, I need to instill some fear in them for the respect that I deserve uh, around the household. Uh, folks, as always, this is Shoe and Show uh, run by FDRA and Fanny. It's your footwear trade and business association. We're covering all things footwear, all the way from design, the first idea of a shoe, all the way through the process to developing, making, shipping, and selling that shoe to a consumer. We track all sorts of data. We have tons of services, uh, consulting services, uh, networking events, etc. The whole focus is to empower and enhance the footwear industry. If you're not a member, please reach out to Sandy, myself, or Matt. We're happy to talk to you about how we can help boost your business. And that's really what it's all about. The great news is, as a nonprofit, it doesn't cost that much. Um, So, as always... Shoeandshow.com is the, the, the website. Uh, it's got all our episodes. Please go back and listen. Um, also, FDRA.org uh, is our footwear website that has all those solutions and data services that our members can access. Uh, on behalf of Sandy, Matt, and myself, we thank you for listening every single Monday. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, however you like to download your audio and listen to it, we're there. Shoe and Show. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Uh, be healthy, be safe, and until next time, Shoein is out. Shoein has been brought to you by the FDRA, the Footwear Industries Association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion, helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. For information about FDRA, visit FDRA.org.